Good day, audience. My name is Professor A.K. Awedoba, Israel African Studies. My job is to give you a talk on African Studies in connection with the University of Ghana required courses. This is going to be the first lecture, which is an introduction to African Studies as a subject. Let me make the remark that this is a big course. Learning about Africa is a lot of work. It involves so much, which means that within the course of a few lectures, it will be impossible to give a full appreciation and understanding of Africa, its peoples, its cultures, and so on and so forth. Take it that these video presentations are meant to be a summary of the lectures that are due to be given. You understand that it's not feasible within a matter of a few hours to compress something that we do for the whole semester within the scope of five, maybe four hours. So that is our understanding. That is what we need to bear in mind as far as these lectures are concerned. So it still requires that you visit the SACA website to see the resources, the PowerPoint presentations, the e-documents, and so on and so forth that you find there. There is also a course book on the subject that I advise you to try and get hold of and read. Now, for this first lecture, which is entitled General Intro. Our objective is to consider the value of African studies in today's world. So what then are our learning objectives? Mainly, it is to understand the distinctive nature of Africa, to be able to explain its representations as well as its misrepresentations and in the process, appreciate Africa's significant contributions to world civilization. I start off by asking my audience, who is an African? This is a very important question to ask. And that is so because Africa, or what an African is, is a construction of various identities. There is a mosaic of identities, various identities, peoples of different identities, ancestries, and so on and so forth, living within the continent as well as beyond the continent. The question is, to what extent do all these categorize as African or as having African pedigree perceive themselves as Africans? To what degree are all who perceive themselves as African accepted as such by others. We may ask more questions, take into our consideration the fact that for some people it is possible to talk about Africanness, different layers of Africanness. In other words, some people be more African than others. Is it possible to say that? How do these identities that we've been talking about, we say there are multiple identities, a variety of identities, how do they interface with citizenship within the African continent? And what are the implications of these contestations as far as African identities and citizenships are, especially vis-a-vis -vis our attempt to construct Pan-Africanism, uh, making African nations uh, considering a, a kind of trajectory as far as the development of African nations is concerned. Now, at this point, I present to you two pictures, pictures of two males. Who are these people? That's the question. Do you see them as African? That question is for you to answer. One of them is somebody called Barack Obama, the 44th president of the United States of America. The other person is somebody called Guy Scott. And this guy, 
was one time the vice president of an important African country, that is Zambia. And as a matter of fact, even later became the acting president of this country. These two individuals, do you consider them as African? And if you do, why do you consider them as Africans? We're talking about definitions of Africanness. And the issue of the fact that Africanness is something that is multilayered. In other words, it's something which has several layers to it. What are some of these potential layers? There is the legal aspects of it. There is a conceptual and philosophical aspect, as well as the cultural aspects. You might even consider the question of geography. All these are important issues when it comes to talking about or defining Africa. What about the question of race? Can we use race as a criteria for defining who an African is? Well, in trying to do so, let us not forget that South Africa has been described, or rather describes itself, as the rainbow nation. What does that mean? Peoples of African descent, if we're talking about them, we find that there are concentrations of similar looking people all over the world. We find concentrations in Northern and Southern America, in the Caribbean, in India, in the Middle East, and so on. We can also look at the issue from the perspectives of politics. And from a political perspective, maybe you should be talking about citizenships within states, the different countries of Africa, the countries that fall within the EU. Would that be a satisfactory criteria for defining Africanness? What about geography? The countries that we find on the African continent, the map of Africa, would that be sufficient? You could also look at it from the perspective of allegiance. How dedicated is a person to Africa if he's going to consider himself as an African? Can we say that to be an African, you must have African aspirations? In talking about all this, maybe as people who are interested in Africa, it is not a bad thing to pause and ask ourselves, what are the countries that we find within Africa? It is a very simple question, but nevertheless, some of us, I'm not too sure, know where South Sao Tome and Principe is, or Kevin Islands, and so on and so forth. Maybe take a look at the map and try to figure out where the different countries are, how they relate to each other, and so on and so forth. And this as you see, it's a map of Africa. This is a political map of Africa exhibiting the different countries within the continent. So we may ask ourselves, if you look at it politically, in terms of the EU, how many countries can we say belong in the EU? This is something that I leave to you. Now, I get to a point where I'm considering the question of representations as well as misrepresentations. In other words, I'm interested in what people used to say, what some of them still say, and what certain people will still be saying tomorrow. What are those things that they are saying? How true are those things? They say that Africa is a continent of, without history. They say it is the people are without a civilization. In other words, they are uh, savages, barbarians, primitives. Some say it is a dark continent, as if there are some continents which are light continents. Some say these people call Africans are people of inferior minds. These are all mis misrepresentations. And in fact, there, is, there are two ways of looking at these uh, misrepresentations. There is that dialogue or that narrative which emphasizes that Africa is an exception as far as the world is concerned. So that is the accept Africa narrative. Side by side with this is the narrative which considers Africa as negative in all respects. Those who talk about, oh, well, accept Africa, everything else is fine, accept Africa, see that development or say that development works everywhere in the world but in Africa, what happens? It doesn't work. So it doesn't work, why? They advance a number of reasons. 
And they go on to argue that Africa must change in order to develop. In other words, you don't have to shape development to, sh to, to suit your needs. You will have to change so that development will fit you. That is part of the argument. There are those people who say Africa is doomed. In other words, the doomsday narrative, a country of uh, uh, suffering of various kinds of crises, overpopulation, overutilization of scarce resources, environmental crisis, corruption, ethnic tensions, wars, and so on and so forth. To the extent that the argument then is that if external intervention does not come in, this continent is doomed. Do you agree with that? I show you a picture taken from different parts of the world. It's about poverty. Africa is supposed to be a poor continent. But is it only in Africa that we find poor people? The picture speaks for itself. Now, let us consider certain facts about Africa. Well, it is a fact that contemporary Africa in fact, going back long before civilization, as the Europeans know it, Africa had it. Africa has made a significant contribution to global knowledge. Take Egyptian civilization, for example, and other civilizations on the African continent. If you consider areas like agriculture, academia, international trade and commerce, even science and technology, it is not as if Africans have not had a say. We have also made our contributions. And there are positive positivities associated with this continent. Personalities who have made their contributions, like Woli Soyinka, a Nigerian poet and playwright and novelist. This individual who has fought justice at the peril of his life was willing to go to jail to see that the right thing is done. This person earned a Nobel Prize and is still alive. Now, we cannot, we don't have the time to select individuals and go through the whole stretch of their contributions and so on and so forth. So this presentation now tells you something about various inventors, what they have invented, and the countries they come from. And you can see clearly that they come from a variety of countries, Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal, Togo, and so on and so forth. This tells you Africans have also been contributing to the world. World knowledge, civilization, inventions, improvement of life. They have also been doing it. Take the example of Professor Monty Jones, a renowned African scientist. This person is credited with the creation of a special variety of rice, you know, and that is something. So we mustn't necessarily always assume that all the good things that we see in Africa come from our side. Is it true that Africa is hopeless when it comes to business management? What about Ethiopian Airlines? This has been a very successful commercial venture for a long time. That tells you that Africa has got potential. Although we often do not pause to consider Africa's contribution. We only see negativities. Having said all this, we ask ourselves, how do we get the information that we need to be able to make statements about Africa? If we say that Africa has civilization and so on and so forth, it goes back to Egyptian days, where is the proof? The, that proof is there. And that enables us to say that Africa had its history. It's not true to say that Africa is without history. Go to archaeology. Archaeology provides us with all the information that we need about Africa, the human being, the, uh, his interactions with the environment, and so on and so forth. Archaeology does all that. It tells us a lot about some of the ancient civilizations that existed. If you consider our land, you can see how close they are to each other. And that in itself is a historical fact. It suggests that these people that we see in Africa are not, I mean, you will make languages but the truth of the matter is that they are cousins, they are brothers, they are sisters. Because their languages, the languages are relatable, they are related to each other. We'll talk more about this. So if we take certain kinds of seven common words, 
like eat, like chai, like mother, like meat, like drink, and so on and so forth. It is surprising the extent to which different peoples, different languages throughout Africa, especially when taking, again, talking about Ghanaian languages, have words that are similar. Have you ever asked yourself how this has come about? It comes from the fact that once upon a time, the languages that these people speak were sister languages, which have changed. But as they, have, as they change, there are certain relics or residues. And that explains why the word D, the word to eat, is D in somebody's language, is Z in somebody's language, is Chi in somebody's language, and so on and so forth. So accessing Africans, African history, we must also consider the oral tradition. They're very important to us. Folklore, for example, information transmitted by word of mouth, as well as by specialists, creos, and so on and so forth, whose job it is to record the facts and transmit them to us. So forget about the fact that many African societies did not have a writing system. In spite of that, facts, information, history has over the years been recorded verbally in drum language, in songs, and so on and so forth, and transmitted to later generations. And from all these resources, we are able to present a certain kind of history of the country. So at this point, we'll summarize the lecture. And my attempt, my interest has been to give a kind of overview, very introductory, of African studies. There is more that we will say when we actually deliver the lecture. We have tried to examine the distinctive nature of Africa. We have identified some of the misrepresentations and negative stereotypes. We have enumerated some of the significant contributions of Africans. And we have identified several sources or data or information from which we can construct African history. There are, of course, a few items that we can read, which will give us a fuller understanding of some of the things that I've been trying to talk to you today. Some of these items are documents on the, on the net. So please read them. Thanks very much.